So immunity can be innate, which is non-specific, or acquired, which is specific. Now, innate immunity relates to the normal anatomy and physi physiology of the body. So intact skin, intact mucous membranes, the cilia wafting up mucus, the urine flowing through the urinary tract. All these things are innate. They work against a wide variety of organisms. Now, the acquired is, is acquired. We have to get that as a result normally of exposure. So it can be active or passive. But uh, if we think about the active form, what's going on here? So what happens is there's, there's a bacterial cell. Let's, it could be a viral cell. So there's a bacterial cell here. And on its surface, that bacterial cell has got particular proteins. Let's imagine these are triangular shaped proteins for the sake of the diagram. So there are particular shaped proteins on the surface of this pathogenic microorganism which has somehow got into the tissues, perhaps through droplet infection, perhaps through a cut. And this bacteria, given it's left to its own devices, can, can double in number about every half an hour. So very soon a few bacteria can turn into a, a rip-roaring bacterial infection. So what we need to do is mount an immune response which will attack this specific microorganism and eradicate this specific microorganism. So this microorganism acts as what we call an antigen. It's an antigen. Now antigen is short for antibody generating molecule because an antigen will cause the formation of an antibody. And the antibodies are the immune proteins, the immunoglobulins. And these antibodies are actually produced by the body's white blood cells. Particularly, they are produced by the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes particularly. So what happens here, usually there is a T lymphocyte T lymphocyte detects the presence of this antigen and the T lymphocyte will stimulate the B lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes will produce the uh, antibodies. They will be proliferation, increasing numbers of the B lymphocytes and they will produce antibodies and the antibodies will combat the presence of the antigen. So let's imagine here, here we have the uh, bacteria like this, and they've got their antigenic molecules, these so-called epitopes on their surface. Now the antibodies that are generated will be a reciprocal shape to these. So the most common antibodies, the, the immunoglobulin type Gs, they, they just have a, a body component and they have, uh, like us, they have two limbs. And the part at the end is, is multivariable. And the part at the end, the clever part is that this part at the end will be made by the lymphocytes to be the reciprocal shape of this epitope, this antigenic epitope. So it'll be that shape like that. So what that means is that there can be a bond formation between the arm of the antibody like this and the epitope of the uh, antigen. So remember this is the antigen here, this, this is the bug. This is the, this is the antibody, this is the immune protein. And of course it's the presence of the, the bug, the presence of the antigen, something that the immune system recognises as being foreign which has stimulated the T cells to stimulate the B cells to produce these antibodies. These are produced by the, uh, by the B cells, differentiated form of B cell called plasma cell. And, and, and as we've seen, these have two arms like this and a body, body component. And what this means is because they've got two arms, they can actually fit onto um, another one like this. And via that mechanism, 
different antibody groups of antibodies can clump together huge numbers of bacteria in this process of agglutination. It can bring them all together into a big clump. And once they're all clumped together, a big phagocytic cell like a, a macrophage can come along and phagocytose them all. So it's been said that the antibodies prepare the food for the phagocytes table. And that's how it's working. But the point is this is specific. Because the next bacteria that comes along, well it might have a different type of epitope, it might be a different antigen. In fact it will be because it's a different species or a different type of bacteria. So this antibody will not work against this circular shaped uh, epitope. This circular shaped antigen here. And it, it, this is bug B. Different one. So again the immune system will make specific antibodies to fight that one and the one that would fight that one would be uh, this shape and it'd be circular like that and again that can fit onto uh, another one and agglutinate that group of bacteria which of course is good and they too can be phagocytosed but the point is the reason that this is specific is that the immune system has to make specific antibodies that combat specific antigens. It's a specific nature of immunity. And that is in essence what happens in, in, in acquired immunity. It's this antibody mediated specific form of immunity as opposed to the innate immunity which acts against a wide variety of infecting organisms. This one is specific and has to be produced. To, to be effective against the, the antigenic organisms, which would otherwise cause infection. And it's the delay in producing these uh, antibodies that means we can be ill for a few days before we start feeling better if we have an infection, because it's going to take time to mount this immunological response.